what's going on guys welcome back to chasing limits so in today's episode we're going to be talking about brakes but more specifically we're going to be talking about the carbon rotors carbon pads the calipers and everything else and we're also going to take some uh, temperature readings between uh, cold normal and hot according to the display menu so stay tuned for all that All right, so here's my Julia Quadrifoglio equipped with the carbon ceramic brakes. So the fronts measure 390 millimeters in diameter and are mated to the six piston aluminum caliper. And the rears measure 360 mils made into the four piston, piston aluminum caliper. And the whole braking system is by Brembo, of course. Now, we all know that this is a super expensive setup, but just how expensive? Well, I inquired to my <clears throat> to my local Alfa Romeo dealership and I got these quotes. So for the front pads and rotors comes as a set. It costs $13,540 installed and for the rear pads and rotors it costs $11,200 installed as well. So altogether that's $24,740 for a complete brake job from the dealership. Is that expensive or what? Yeah. Now, the reason they're so expensive is all down to the production process. It takes a very long time and a lot of effort to build them, with each brake disc taking the best part of a month to make. The carbon fiber and silicone resin mix is put into molds and placed under 20,000 kilograms of pressure at 200 degrees Celsius before being cooled. This mold is then heated again over two days at 1,000 degrees Celsius before more silicone powder is added and is heated a third time up to 1700 degrees for another 24 hours, this time under vacuum. So this whole process transforms the raw ingredients surrounding the carbon fibers <clears throat> into the silica carbide ceramic that adds the durability and longevity. So the co combination of these two materials offers an extensive list of advantages such as significant weight saving, which will help with vehicle dynamics, such as acceleration, cornering, and of course, braking. Now we can throw in more comfort as the suspension works less due to less unsprung weight. Now let's talk about the much longer life for the parts themselves. <clears throat> so they say they can go up to 160,000 kilometers before you have to replace the rotors. But of course, that depends if you go to the track very often, and that's good. that number is going to be slightly less. You're also going to have wider temperature tolerance and increased stopping power with no brake fade, which actually is a very good thing for the track. Now, for street use, another big advantage is that they virtually produce zero brake dust. So yeah, that means your rims are going to stay cleaner for much, much longer. All right, guys, so after just uh, normal sitting cruising, as you guys can see, the brakes are cold. So let's take a measurement and see what those numbers look like. All right, guys, so now that the brakes are cold, according to the display, so just normal driving, we're gonna take this uh, infrared thermometer. I'm gonna point the laser at the rotor and see that it registers 30, around 38 degrees Celsius. The caliper, it's a bit warmer at around 41 degrees. And now if we go to the back, the rotor is registering 33-ish degrees and the caliper itself, 36. 37 degrees or so. So now let's go for a drive and see what uh, normal operating conditions look like. All right guys, so as you can see now, we heated up the brakes, now they're at normal operating temperature. So let's see what those numbers look like. All right, so with the brakes at normal, oper uh, normal operating temperature, let's see what the rotors read. 
So let's wait and let it settle for a bit. So it's around 118 degrees Celsius or so. Caliper. Slightly cooler at around 50. Around 50-ish degrees. Let's go for the back. Rear rotor around 113 ish or so and rear caliper a bit cooler than the front ones at around 45 degrees all these degrees are in celsius by the way okay now let's try and uh, get it hotter guys after numerous attempts it's pretty much nearly impossible to get them that hot at least uh, during street driving unless I go really fast but obviously there's speed limits so that's more of a track thing so I did heat them up a bit more so let's just see what those numbers are and how much they increased by all right so the brakes are very stinky but let's see how much we got up to so we got up to 267 degrees for the front rotor 66 caliper it's around 127 130 well it's jumping up pretty good around 130 then let's check the rear rear rotor around 240 it's jumping up all over so yeah, around 240, let's say for average, 230, and then the caliper, it's around 116 degrees. All right guys, so after we did heat up the brakes to well over uh, 200 degrees Celsius, so the braking still feels the same, brake pedal still feels the same, doesn't get any more spongier, uh, there's no sign of brake fades, noise levels they're a bit louder when you're on it over and over it's more like a growl noise but there is no squeaking or anything like that uh, so overall I'm pretty impressed uh, let me know what you guys think hopefully you guys found this uh, video interesting and maybe some good information in here that you guys didn't know <laughs> in regards to the carbon uh, ceramic brakes uh, so yeah let me know what you guys think. Leave a comments or questions down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.